You know one big thing, and I want you to get this down, right? A lot of people, they always blame this thing here. What's the word? Resources. They always blame this word here. What people always say, what people always say, right, when they're starting something out, is they always say, Number one, I don't have the money to do it. Right? I don't have the money to do it. Has anybody in this room ever, you had something, one venture, one thing you really want to do, but you need a little bit, you need to save up a little bit of money before you can do it, right? Okay, wrong strategy. How do I know saving is the wrong strategy? Let me tell you, track history. Look at your track history. You see all savers, 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 you've been saving how long and you haven't saved up yet? How likely is it that the next three months or 10 months, is you gonna save up enough? Not very likely. Wrong strategy, because let's look at, we said before, we said success leaves clues. Let's look at the most successful, most wealthiest of people out there, right? It's never this thing. It's never the lack of money, right? This is saying, and I want you to write it down, yeah? It's never the lack of resources. It's only ever the lack of resourcefulness. What does that mean? If you don't have the resources, what do you do? You find the resources. But a lot of people, they're using the wrong strategy. I want you to, I want to, I want you to start understanding the money game. Because school didn't teach us the money game. School taught us our subjects, algebra, which is, I still don't know what it is, but <laughs> this is important, right? And all these different things. And it's to get a, so that you get a qualification so you can get a job. And then when you get a job, then hopefully one day retire early. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's like the, you know, when you ask most people out there what your dream is, if I can retire early, that's their dream. Now, what does that even mean? It means that can I, if I can enjoy life at the end of my life, that's my dream. <laughs> that's quite sad if you think about it. This whole system is kind of, it doesn't teach us. When, when did we have? We had religious education or we had double science and passive income intensive. Financial freedom. We never got that. But money is the most important game. We're playing it every single day. But we don't know how to play it, right? So can I just open your mind up to how to think when it comes to this money thing? Because if you look, success leaves. Richard Branson, he starts Virgin Atlantic. He pitches for investors' money to start the business. He was already a billionaire. Right? He starts Virgin Money. He gets other people, investors' money, and does his business. If you look at every, every entrepreneur, you look at Warren Buffett. You know who Warren Buffett is, right? Nearly the richest investor out there, right? Multi, multi-billionaire. You can go to value investing courses and learn all the stocks and shares and all that type of stuff. But let me tell you something. There's one big thing that people are missing. You can learn how to analyze trades like Warren Buffett. But after that course, after that seminar, you go home, you're going to be like, okay, I can think like Warren Buffett. Yes, but you're missing what Warren Buffett's actual biggest strength is. It's not actually trading. Because when you get home and you're like, okay, I know how to analyze trades, you're going to be thinking, okay, so hmm, how much should I put in first to trade? Let's put in $5 to start off. When are you going to become the billionaire? Success leaves clues. You look at Warren Buffett, what does he do? Leverage. Same game. It's no, it's no coincidence. It's no accident. Same game. What does he do? He's constantly pitching for finance. But why? He's a multi-billionaire. Why does he need to pitch for finance? This is leverage. This is leverage. This is how the wealth game is played. Now you're thinking, oh, but that's using other people. I don't like borrowing other people's money. 
Now, let's do what we call a cognitive reframe here. This is not about borrowing. This is not about borrowing. Let me ask you a question, okay? If, for example, okay, let's say Coca-Cola share, shares, right? Let's say it's worth a million dollars. If I can give an opportunity and give you it at $100,000, who would take this opportunity? Right? The rest of you are insane. <laughs> you would take the opportunity because why? And it's an opportunity. I'm not borrowing money from you to invest in this company. I'm giving you an opportunity. Does, does this make sense? You need to start understanding the difference here. If you have a product, you have a service, you have a business, and you really think it's going to change the world. <laughs> you think it's really going to make money. You're not borrowing money from other people. I'm giving other people an opportunity to invest and make money. When we reframe the idea of it, then we are more open to, actually, this is how the money game is played. <laughs>